Hello, welcome back to Sniper Elite V2 and uh, my channel, because I've been gone for about three weeks now just doing regular stuff in real life that, that uh, I've been busy with, such as tests and finals and such and stuff like that, so I haven't really been uh, posting videos simply because I don't really have the time. Um, now that that's kind of over, I have a little more time to just kind of, you know, do fun stuff like that. That being said, I uh, expect for me to be posting a lot more than I have been in the last three or so weeks. So now I think this is mission um, ten or so. I haven't I haven't played anything except for Dota 2 really in the last past little bit. That being said, I'm not really sure. of uh, where we are in the storyline in this, but um, judging by the mission's uh, scenery, I can tell you that we are near, oh, I don't know, Silo Heights, somewhere like that. That's gotta hurt. Now this level, it has a lot of these, like, trench systems. That you uh, that you don't normally see in World War II games, although uh, trench warfare was actually fairly common in inside World War II, more than you uh, normally think. Now, this is mainly because the media likes to portray uh, the war in a different light than. Well, well, admittedly, trench warfare isn't exactly the most exciting thing uh, to actually watch, and that's why most movies that uh, that actually even feature it that's even said in World War one don't normally show it uh, a good example would be like lost battalion if you've uh, ever seen that where well it's, it's about a battalion gets that gets encircled and uh, they they actually put it somewhere where it isn't just you know a bunch of dudes sitting surrounded by other dudes in trenches however most of the Eastern front where uh, where most of the actual decisions uh, key turning points and such actually happened in World War II were, were pretty much fun exactly as uh, they were in World War One, in which uh, of course they did have armor, of course there were tank battles and urban warfare such as inside uh, Stalingrad, Leningrad, Moscow, Kursk, uh, Smolensk and places such as that, but in the end it really just came down to trench defenses and the enemy trying to overcome those and uh, that happened as the Germans were advancing forward and they actually were finally met with some resistance later on in uh, in 40 and 41 however the the system of defense the Russians made were were just pretty much the same just trenches uh, anti-tank ditches anti-tank guns and MG bunkers was uh, pretty much what it came down to, and eventually and the Germans started doing the same thing when the Russians uh, started to push back. Now, some of that was, uh, well, just pretty much transferred to, uh, to the desert campaign. I hope that that guy didn't notice that. Oh well, still works. And uh, admittedly, that also works pretty well because, you know, it's it's in the desert, so there really isn't much cover, it's just kinda um, sand. Sand, stone, sand, st sand, inside houses, and just kinda like that. That guy took a lot of shots. Twitch. Okay, there we go. So, actually, I'm starting to remember this uh, this level when I played it for the first time, and I remember it being a real pain in the ass later on. I'll show you why. Like this part, I know that I can just kind of sprint through. There won't really be any consequence. 
Uh, simply because once you go up there, they can't really follow you. Looks like there's a sniper somewhere over there. Screw it. I'm a run. I'm a run. Fast. Climb. Jump. There we go. Okay, now this is where it gets difficult because uh, it, it's pretty much one of those hold off the enemy for a such and such an amount of time and then do something uh, places. And the only real thing is that the amount of troops like near here, near the objective is just obscenely large and you're supposed to be like fighting them off even though you're, you're kind of a sniper in which you don't do that. So uh, that being said, we, like we have to wait until that rocket refuels and then shoot it to blow it up. And you can see that there are just guards everywhere, everywhere. Which, uh, being said, makes this one of the more difficult missions inside the game. And I'm just gonna set up all of these mines and such so that they can't really uh, move on to my position without, you know, being just blown the fuck up. Whoopsies. Now after this mission, there's actually only one more level, and I think I'm... Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh -oh, sorry. How did he get through there? Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, so there's no real way to stop them from uh, pretty much getting alerted. I think it's actually one of the things that triggers the rocket launch. And that being said, we we just had to kind of fend all of these people off, which is quite a difficult task. If you just, like, look at all of this. Oh, grenade hit! Grenade hit! Yes, yes. I love it when that happens, especially if it takes out more than one of them. Well, at least the landmines and such are working, so at least we are taking a toll on them like that, but look at the amount of troops I'm supposed to deal with, and keep in mind that, like, you know, this isn't uh, John Ramble, this is some sniper guy, which makes it just so much difficult, more difficult. Because, you know, John Ramble has that anti-bullet magnet thing where things just simply bounce around him and never actually hit him. This is one of the farthest view distances actually inside the game. I just kind of noticed that with uh, with fraps on, it's uh, it's actually kind of slowly bogging down. I mean, you can kind of tell that my frame rate dropped a little bit, not all that much, but still, it's kind of noticeable. Come on, pop your head up, pop your head up. Now this time I'm actually doing fairly well, I mean, I had to replay this a few times uh, when I just got the game, but, you know, this is actually going swimmingly well in terms of killing these troopers. camp that ramp uh, as long as we have explosive things over there, mines and trip mines. But um, probably the best thing to do would be actually just kind of pick them off. 
like this. No, I just want I just really want that rocket to be done with uh, refueling so we can actually shoot it. And the odd thing is that we kinda pop it like um, like one of those tanks where it's just like a little valve that you have to shoot and then it blows up. Oh there we go, there we go. Okay. No! No! It was not supposed to happen. Ah. Okay, well at least it starts us off fairly close to the actual launch sequence. Okay, there we go, there we go. Where the heck are we supposed to shoot? Okay, there we go. It's kind of odd how we actually have to do this because um, in in a essentially all you would have to do to actually pretty much make the rocket miss is to fly next to it and get the plane's wings to just kind of move back and forth and kind of create a wave of air and then it was just at the falls Tiergarten down. 1845 hours. I didn't have much time. Stopping Wolf. You can read the briefing if you'd like. I'm not gonna waste the time and just kind of pause it there. But um, yeah, all you really have to do to take those V2 rockets down is it's literally just flying next to them and waving the plane a little bit, and then they, like you know, the air turbulence kind of causes them to just dive and die. That being said, I mean you can kind of take out that missile very, very easily. Now, uh, we're, we're actually going back to where we started the game from, and I think you can kind of tell, uh, because I believe we were just right over there, we went into the buildings and kind of, yeah, just went from there, only now. It's the Russians that we're fighting here. We should probably get into the shadows and hide. Hide, hide, hide. There's probably a sniper somewhere. I saw that, uh... Yeah, I saw that thing. The little, you know, arrow that indicates that there's somebody there, but I cannot find him. I know there's a guy somewhere in those buildings where something dude. something is definitely over there. But I just can't tell and then they like you know the air turbulence kinda causes them to just dive and die. That being said, I mean you can kinda take out that missile very, very easily. Now, uh, we're, we're actually going back to where we started the game from, and I think you can kind of tell, uh, because I believe we were just right over there, we went into the buildings and kind of, yeah, just went from there, only now. It's the Russians that we're fighting here. We should probably get into the shadows and hide. Hide, hide, hide. There's probably a sniper somewhere. I saw that, uh... Yeah, I saw that thing. The little, you know, arrow that indicates that there's somebody there, but I cannot find him.
I know there's a guy somewhere in those buildings or something. Something is definitely over there. But I just can't tell. Or we can load him up and kill everybody inside that general area. There we go. Oh, that's gotta that's gotta be horrible. I mean you can like you can see it's oh it's squirting from his face. Oddly enough there's like nobody up there to be putting up the banners, they just kinda fall down. Yeah, those those banners hang themselves up, you know. People don't. People don't do that type of stuff. Banners just fly up there, attach themselves to the walls, and go from there. How? Ah, we're supposed to get on to the Brandenburg Gate. Ooh, that's gonna be interesting. Now that you mention it, oh. You got that concussive shock from the grenade too, and that's that's a nice thing. How uh, e even if you're under cover, grenades can actually kind of dink you at like that. Would this guy please stop throwing stuff at me? There we go. Grenades actually like concuss like that. They if you don't get killed by the shrapnel or the explosion, there is a chance that you might be actually uh, concussed to death, which. I'm not exactly familiar with um, how it works, but I think it's because of the air blast and it either sucking the air out of your lungs and just kind of destroying all the little capillaries and stuff like that, or um, it hitting, like just going through your ears and just kind of shaking your brain to death. I'm a little disappointed that there isn't like a sniper mission that is uh, fought in or like on top of the Reichstag, which would have been kind of interesting just to, it would have been interesting kind of to see a mission in which you kind of hold the Russian advance off from the top of the building, just kind of in like a little corner or something. And in fighting your way out, this is... Oh, nope, I had thought that was a civilian or just some random dude and would have been the first person that I would have found that isn't actually a soldier to be alive. Okay, let's see. I hate these climbing, like, places because you never can figure them out unless you've already been through them. They just kind of look like outer scenery to me. But uh, this works, so... We are on the gate, and um, last time we took a shot from like this building, which is now uh, destroyed. Who's the guy that we're supposed to be shooting at? There he is. Hey! No, no aim assistance, just one shot, and... That works. And now the vehicle blows up for no apparent reason and has to have like a mushroom cloud. The Battle of Berlin ended at 8.23 the next morning, May 2nd, 1945, when Commander General Weidling submitted the surrender of German forces to General Chukov of the Red Army. Within a few days, the war ended, but already a new war was beginning. The Cold War. And I was its first soldier.
Well, there you go. That is Sniper Elite V2. Um, pretty sure there's nothing... Oh, great, I can't actually skip it. Well, I will see you all later. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video and such. And, um... What, what are your recommendations? What games would you like to see Let's Played? Post that in the comment, and I will see you all later. Goodbye, for now.